is Tamika Walters, Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer for Burr and Foreman. And I'm so excited today to have with me Tammy Matheson, a legal practice assistant in our Bluffton office. Tammy is a veteran and has graciously offered to talk to us today about her experience with the military in honor of Veterans Day. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Tamika. Pleasure to be here. Yes, so great to have you. So let's go ahead and jump in. Um, when did you join the military and how long did you serve? Well, I joined the Marine Corps specifically um, in 1980, right out of high school. And I served three years on active duty and three years in the reserves. Awesome. Now, what led you to join the military? Are you part of a military family? Was it sort of a tradition? for you all? Yes, um, I'm a military brat. My father was in the Air Force and my brother was in the Army and I actually was thinking of joining the Navy when it all um, started and I had taken the test and everything and had been talking to the Navy recruiter and there was um, one of the career days at school, at my high school, and you know, this Six foot four in a dress blue uniform, Marine walks up, you know, he's poster child for the Marine Corps, and he asks if he can sit down, and I tell him that I'm joining the Navy, and he's like, why wouldn't you join the Marine Corps? And I'm like, because I didn't know you had women in the Marine Corps, because in 1980, it's not something you heard that much. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, yeah, there are women in the Marine Corps, and that was pretty much all it took, because, you know... <laughs> um, I, so I talked to him and, and the rest is history. I joined the Marine Corps. That's amazing. And so you were having this conversation in high school. So did you join right out of high school? I did. Um, I graduated in June and then went to boot camp at Paris Island here in South Carolina um, in October because at that time there were so few women that went in that they had to actually wait until they had enough to be a platoon. Oh, wow. So you were on, yeah, you were on what was called delay entry. Um, so I joined in June, but didn't actually go until October. Oh my goodness. So I just want to make sure I'm painting a picture here. So you were 17, 18 years old. Um, 18. 18. Mm -hmm. Just graduated from high school. You're a woman and you decide to join the Marines and here you are shipped off to boot camp. <laughs> it sounds, right. sounds like you're a brave woman. <laughs> um, can you um, tell us a little bit about your boot camp experience, like paint a picture of, of what that was like for you? Um, well, I'll be honest, you know, at 18, the first, I think the first night or two after lights went out and everybody's laying in the rack, the tears come into your eyes and you're thinking, oh gosh, what have I gotten into? You mm. know, because all day somebody has been screaming at you, you know. Oh, and then, um, but then you start, you know, things start coming together and you as a team, all the other recruits, you all start coming together and you, you find that um, you're all, even though you're trying to get yourself through, you're trying to get everybody else through too. So mm -hmm. you come together and, you know, you lean on each other and you help each other and, you know, you just, it's like you forget about the the hard part of it and you just go, you just do. That's wonderful. Um, and, and don't feel bad about crying. I went to college and I remember that, that last moment with my family, um, they had driven me up. And I, I went to school very far away from my family. And I just remember that moment when I finally realized, oh, my goodness, they're leaving and I'm going to be here all by myself. Right. And to my <laughs> surprise, tears welled up in my eyes and I didn't have anyone screaming at me. So <laughs> I can only imagine. Um, but it's wonderful that, you know, despite the difficulties, you were able to kind of, you know, form a cohesive group and and not only care about yourself, but care for others as well. I love that. Yeah, um, uh, you know, it, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Well, it's just, it's not like anything I had ever done. You know, you for you forget that um, 
you forget about you and you become us, you know, mm-hmm. and I, and it's, it's, it's mentally and physically challenging. You know, I mean, there's a lot of physical activity, a lot of running and physical um, exertion, but there's a lot of mental as well. So mm-hmm. like I said, you just, you forget about me and you become us and you know, you just, it's, you know, everybody's on the same mission. That's awesome. Um, now tell me about your overall experience. So you survived boot camp, obviously. And then what was your role in the Marines? What did you do? Um, I was what was it's called a communications center operator. It's um, or comm center operator for short. Um, it is where all the messages you go through classified messages specifically. You know, you don't send classified e- messages through email. Everything's sent through cryptography. Um, so back then, you know, it was a um, a room you walked into the, you know, huge computers, you know, loud and teletypes and, um, and everything. And, and I had a top secret clearance and Mm -hmm. which was a lot of fun because there was times that I had to carry a briefcase that was actually handcuffed to my wrist, you know? So so here I was 19 years old and I thought, Oh, how cool is this? Yeah. (laughs) This sounds very James (laughs) Bondish. It, 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 I know it sounds that way, but it's really, it really wasn't that glamorous. And then, um, you know, and, and that's the thing, my time in the Marine Corps, and I loved every minute of it, um, compared to these, the men and women who are serving now, you know, I mean, I served during peacetime, so there's nothing extraordinary about the time that I served. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I admire the men and women who are serving now and have, you know, gone through everything that they're going through with this, well, now that it's over, this war in Afghanistan and Iraq. So you, I mean, back in this time that you're talking about, you would not have seen combat, you know, with your own two eyes, right? No. And even even if there had been going something going on, you know, um, women at that time in 1980, we didn't go to combat. We didn't participate in the, you know, there was only a certain percentage of jobs in the Marine Corps that was even open to women. Mm-hmm. Um, it just wasn't, you know, um, you were either some type of admin or comm like me or supply or mechanics of some sort, you know, and now, you know the the women who are serving now. It's it, they amaze me. These women are fine, flying fighter jets. Mm. You know they're in they're going into combat with with everybody else. Um, an example is the the Linus program that they started in Iraq and Afghanistan because men could not. You know a man could not search a female over there, you know, their culture is so different. So they had to embed women into it so that they could do the things that the men could not physically do. Isn't that um, interesting? You know, with, you know, to talk to a woman and everything. And I, so these women have, you know, the old saying, you've come a long way, baby. It's true. There's, you know, there's only a handful of jobs that are now that are not available to women, whereas the majority of the jobs were not available to women when I joined. That's really amazing um, when you think about it, because this is within the span of a lifetime. I mean, I was very little in 1980 when you started in the military, and I'm still here. I mean, it's been in the span of a, right. of a lifetime that so much has changed. And we went from, you know, having very limited non-combat roles for women to now having roles that were essential for women to, you know, where only a woman could really do it. And, and so it's amazing to make that progress um, in a, a relatively short period of time, although people have been fighting for that for, for a lot longer, I'm sure. I, um, besides the, the differences in job prospects, can you tell us a little bit more about the differences between serving as a man versus serving as a woman in the Marines during the 80s when you were serving? Um, 
Yeah, you know, it, we laugh about it now. I don't know. Um, I mean, right down to the uniforms, you know, the uniforms now, they are starting to tailor them more so that it is uniform across the board. The women's uniforms look more like the men's uniforms. So when they're standing in a formation, you know, you can't tell, you know, male from female Mm -hmm. where our in 1980, we, you know, it's funny because you think about an 18, 19 year old girls, you know, we, and I say girls, we weren't girls, we were women, but we were 18, 19 years old, maybe 110, 120 pounds, and yet we had to wear a girdle. Oh, my and, goodness. I, you know, and, and most of us had never even, you know, never worn a girdle. And, you know, our eyes about pipe popped open when they said you had to wear a girdle because they wanted that smooth, you know, the ring course always the um, appearance has always been top notch with the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. Um it, it, it's imperative, you know, I mean, one of our, one thing that we had to wear if we were in um, a uniform other than the utilities, which is camouflage uniforms, if we were in anything other than those, we had to have on lipstick. Oh, my goodness. It's like, yeah, um, like flight it's, attendants it's back in the day had to have yeah. on full makeup. I don't know if they still do, but it seems to me like back in the day, <laughs> they had to be a lot yeah. more dressed up too. So that's fascinating right. um, exactly. to have to wear and, a girl on lipstick. Yeah, I'm sorry. It was only 40 years ago. It sounds like it was 100 years ago. <laughs> Absolutely. I can't imagine trying to breathe in one of those things. <laughs> um, right. So, so I, it just seems like we've come so far um, and you kind of have already touched on this next point I want to draw out, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do you think um, that there are any lessons on diversity that we can take from the Marines? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, not just a male female thing, but on diversity in particular, you know, as Marines, we're taught not so much to see color. We, we're all green, as we call it, you know, instead of black or white or, or brown, we're green. Mm-hmm. And it, um, we're family, we're brothers and sisters. Um, I remember my first, after boot camp, my first room, uh, there were four of us in the room. And there was, of course, myself, um, one roommate was Polish, one was black, and one was gay. And at that time, you know, it wasn't, you know, being gay in the military was not allowed. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, that was a, that was taboo. It wasn't the don't ask, don't tell. It was if you got, if you were outed as being gay, you were put out of the Marine Corps. You know, you were, you were wow. discharged. And I, um, where now it is you know, openly accepted. And I, and, you know, but we didn't, there was four of us in the room. We didn't care. You know, we were there for, to share a room, to do our jobs. And, you know, it, it just didn't matter. And I knew that we didn't judge each other. They were my sisters. And I knew that if the tips were down, they had my back and I had theirs. And that's all that mattered. Right. Um, you were all one team, despite your differences. You yeah. were who you were, but you were all still on one team and depending on one another. And ultimately, that's where we're all trying to get to, right? Where we're diverse, but we're still including everyone. And, and we understand that, you know, we all rise or fall together. Um, yeah. Now, let's talk about um, veterans more generally. And, you know, we so often when the topic of veterans come up, everyone's always, oh, thank you for your service. And we owe such a debt to our veterans who put their lives on the line, et cetera. And there's a lot of lip service paid to veterans. And I just want to ask you, you know, how are we doing as a society with respect to veterans? Are, are there, is there anything that we could be doing better? in your opinion? That's like the best thing you could have asked me. Um, You know, Tamika, we're losing approximately 20 
22 active duty and veterans a day to suicide. 22. And, I, and you know, yeah. the biggest thing I think we can do right now is to remove the stigma associated with PTSD and mental health issues. Let these guys and girls know that, you know, they they if you know somebody that's suffering from a, you know, depression or whatever it is, let them know that it's okay to reach out for help. You know, it's not, you're not weak because you're asking for help. Just like the Olympian athletes that brought it to light this past summer. You know, I don't care how hard you train or how strong you are. Sometimes you may need some help. That's right. And, I'd, and you know, you need to be able to ask for it. And, you you know, people need to, we need to remove that stigma and say, it's okay to get some help. Mm-hmm. Um we're just leaving, we're losing so many people so quickly. Yeah. And, um, you, you mentioned this when you first started, um, combat has changed now, right? I mean, people have been in these active war zones for, for very long periods of time, sometimes doing multiple tours of duty and the toll on their mental health is just, it's hard to even fathom unless you've gone through it. So how much more so do people need assistance with their mental health? Um, And and like you say, having no stigma against it. So um, I wholeheartedly agree with you. And um, I certainly hope that we can get our act together and, um, you know, give veterans their due after they have sacrificed so much. Um, Is there anything else you want to say before we close out? I just, I thank you for this opportunity. Well, thank you for sharing your story with us. And we are grateful at Burn Foreman to have um, quite a few veterans here, as a matter of fact. Um, And I just had to highlight your story in particular, because how often do you find a woman Marine um, who served in the 80s? I mean, you're you're a rare bird. And so I definitely wanted to, to feature that. I just, I don't feel like my time was so extraordinary. You know, I didn't do anything spectacular or anything like that. So I just, you know, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you know, it's all, it's all relative to me. It's spectacular probably to you, you know, you've been there and it seems like nothing, but, um, just your bravery, your bravery alone, um, and again, you come from a military family, so it may not seem like much of anything, but um, I think going into the military is a brave choice. Going into the military as a woman is a very brave choice, but then going in at the time that you did and going into the Marines in particular um, is a tremendous amount of courage. So to me, it's an extraordinary story, um, even though it just seems like running the mill to you. So it's, well, it's all a matter of perspective. True. And, Very true. And really, you doing it, you um, you paved the way for other people to to do it later on, and um, we can't take that for granted. You know, somebody else is standing on your shoulders. Believe it or not, if they didn't have you doing communications in the '80s, they wouldn't have um, people flying women flying jets today. So, um, yeah, it is an extraordinary story. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. And I'm happy that we have made as much progress that we've had um, in these past several decades. And um, I look forward to, you know, the military becoming more inclusive and Burn Foreman becoming more inclusive as well. So thank you. Thank you very much. And happy Veterans Day. Thank you. I appreciate it.